It was annoying. And I remember the branch manager coming up to me because I used to work overtime a lot. He came up to me. He was like, no more overtime. You need to take an hour. You need to take an hour lunch and you got to work. You got to take your 15 minute breaks. So I was like, OK, no problem. I never read my, I, I didn't used to read my Bible, but I was so irritated with this job that I used to bring my Bible to work. And I used to sit there and read my Bible and I would cry to God and I would say, God, surely you have more in store for me than this, you know? I thought that I was doing the best that I could do when I went and I graduated from college. I thought that I did the best that I can do when I didn't have a child out of high school. I thought that I was doing everything right. I thought that when I graduated from college that I would have this career job that I adored. I thought that I would be married and with kids. But God showed up and he said, no, things not going to go your way. They're going to go my way. So I was sitting in a car one day and I was crying to God and I was like, God, what is my purpose? What do you have me to do? And God spoke to me. He said, you're going to preach the gospel. And honestly, instantly, I felt like Jeezy. I was like, I'm hearing voices in my head. I think I'm schizophrenic. <laughs> I know God didn't say that. I was like, oh, no, God. I know that's not what you said. Maybe I'm tripping. So I was like, all right, all right, all right. If that's what you said, then guess what? Send a prophet to tell me. If you send a prophet to tell me, I'll do it. Sure enough. God sends the prophet to tell me. The lady came right to me. I was sitting right down that back row, and she was like, stand up. You're going to preach the gospel. God said you're going to preach the gospel. I wasn't happy. I left, and I was like, no, God. These, that lady just told me that because she see my mama now I'm doing this. That's why she told me that. She was thinking that, but that's not what you said. Anyways, to make a long story short, five times I made God tell me. Five times what he wanted me to do, and I still ran. I didn't want to do this. I, I didn't want to be under the scrutiny of people observing and looking at my life. I didn't want to be in front of people. I didn't want that spotlight to be preaching to people. So, you know, sometimes people are busy trying to check other people, and they don't check themselves. See, I had to check myself. I had to put myself in check, and I had to say, look here, Queasy. <laughs> Look here, if you want to be fulfilled, if you want all the things that God has in store for you, this is what you got to do. You can't sit on this no more. You got to get up and you got to do it. You, you, you can choose not to do it. See, I always said, and in the middle of me talking to God about my purpose, I'm like, you know, what's up, God? Like, you said that you know the plans that you have for me, plans to prosper me and not to harm me, but... I didn't want God's plan. See, I was trying to do my own thing. I wanted God to walk with me this way, and I wanted to go this way. And God was like, no, nah, Jack, you got to go this way. I'm trying to take you this way, and you want to go that way. You don't want my plans. You want to do your own thing. So I started to tell myself, you know what, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to do this. This is like six months. This is a whole year now. I've been telling myself I'm going to do this. So. I've been bound from doing this because fear started to overtake me. Uh -huh. Doubt started to overtake me, so I couldn't do it. So finally, I came to the conclusion that I had to get up off this bench, that I had to start this game, and that I had to play every quarter in this game. So, and if you think I'm playing, I, I was riding the bench. The, the, I said right there, the second row, the last row, second row to the last, by the door, back there. That's why I said I rode that bench for a really long time. So I made up all these excuses. I was like, no, God, no, surely you don't want this little h time screwed up girl in front of your people. No, this is not what you want. No, I don't talk like these people, and I don't preach like these people. No, that's not. I made every excuse in the book. I was like Jeremiah. I was just like Jeremiah. And as a matter of fact, in Jeremiah 1, let me get the time. I ain't really used to this. In Jeremiah 1, the Lord came to him saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
So the whole time I was making these excuses and God was like, it's okay. Before you were even born, I knew what I wanted you to do. I knew what type of speaker you would be. I know what you're capable of doing. You don't have to worry. I'm right by you. I'm on your side. Just get out there and do it. But I didn't have the courage to do it. So I want to tell y'all this story. And in this story, it ain't in the Bible. I couldn't think of no one else to do this illustration. Let's talk basketball for a second. Let's play a little basketball, okay? James Harden, James Harden, and those of you that ain't familiar with James Harden, he's a, he plays in the NBA. He's an NBA star. He was okay with playing 22 minutes. He didn't know the greatness that was over his life. He didn't know what he was about to encounter when he was gonna get traded. As a matter of fact, he, he, was, sad about, he was sad about being in OKC, riding the bench only playing 22 minutes, averaging 16 points. That was okay for him. That was okay for him. So when Harden gets off this bench, that's when he started to see the greatness over his life. He didn't see the greatness being in OKC, riding the bench, playing maybe a little bit of first quarter, a little bit of second, a little bit of third, and maybe some of fourth. He was okay with that. See, it's necessary that I get off this bench and I play all four quarters. I got to start this game because I got to get to great, the greatness that's over my life. See, put me in the game, coach. Now I'm saying, put me in the game, God. I will play the one, the two, the three, or the four. Whatever position you want me in, I'm ready to play now. Whatever you do, just don't sit me back on this bench no more. Because, see, I'm not beneficial riding this bench no more. I got to get up and start this game. There's greatness that I got to get to. And I'm not about to play about the greatness that's over my life. I got to get off this bench and start this game. I'm ready to play now. At first I was scared, but now I'm ready to play. See, if you know anything about basketball, you can't play basketball. You, it's just not, if you're going to have offense, then you're going to need defense too. You just ain't going to play basketball with just offense. See, I'm on the offense right now, and now I understand that the defense is going to come. And they're going to come to try to stop me from scoring, and I'm not about to let that happen. The defense is coming. I know the people that don't like me are coming. I know the people that's trying to slander my name is coming. I know the people that opinions don't matter is coming. But guess what? I'm still going to score. I feel like OJ in his prime. Catch me if you can, because you can come, but I'm still about to touch down. I feel like Michael Jordan back in 96, 97. You can't guard me. You can't guard me. Y'all can try to come and double team me, but I'm still going to score. I'm still going to score in this game. I, it's necessary that I play all four quarters. I got to start this game. It's necessary that I come off this bench. See, I got to break generational curses off my family. I got to pull down strongholds. I got to come off this bench. And if anybody that know me, then you would know that I don't play about the Rockets. That I'm turned up about these Rockets. Right now, I feel like that the Rockets are in Golden State in the Game 7 in the Western Conference Finals. You can't calm me down right now about my destiny. I'm serious about my destiny. I'm coming at my destiny neck and I'm not letting up this time around. Right now, I'm ready to go to war with fear now. I'm ready to go to war with doubt now. See, you're not going to win this time. The only way you're going to win is if I go back and sit on this bench and that's not an option no more. I'm not going back to this bench. You're not going to overpower me this time, fear. You're not going to bound me down this time, fear. You're not going to do that to me, doubt, because guess what? I'm off this bench. Now I'm in the game. Now I'm starting this game. Now you're not gonna do it to me. It's not gonna happen. It's not. So this time around, I'm not looking for support. I'm not looking for a friend. My biggest supporter been waiting on me to get off this bitch and start this game. The friend I need been waiting on me to get off this bitch and start this game so him and I can get acquainted and he can take me to the next dimension of my life. That's the friend that I need so this time around we can go ahead and nip it in the bud. I'm not looking for it. I'm not looking for it. I don't want it. I know now that I got to start this game and I got to start playing. That's the only thing that's on my mind right now. See, I understand now 
that I'm not purposeless no more. I understand that there's purpose written all over me. I understand that I'm dripping in purpose. My swag is purpose. See, I'm drunk off this thing called purpose and ain't no alcohol in me. I'm high off this thing called purpose and I ain't smoke no blunt. I'm serious about my purpose. I'm not playing this time around. People won't play with me when it comes to my purpose and get into my destiny. I'm not going for it no more. It's not gonna happen. See, I'm not content no more with being that girl just sitting and riding the bench to the fourth quarter, playing the last 30 seconds when my team already down by 30 points. It's people that's waiting on me to show up. I got to start this game because people are waiting on me to show up. I got to do this. It's necessary that I get up off this bench. It's necessary. See, I'm serious. I really feel like the Rockets playing right now. When the Rockets are playing, I can't calm down. You can't calm me down. I'm wired up right now about this thing called destiny. I want y'all to get serious about your destiny. I want you to start to get serious about your purpose and what God has put in you and what, what you need to do. Y'all got to come off this bench. It's time for y'all to stop riding the bench and start this game. Y'all got to do it. Let, take it from me. Take it from this girl right here. This took a lot of boldness. This is what you call brave. You can do the same thing. Stop playing and riding that bench. See, my mind, my mindset started to change. I got a different mindset now. I'm the MVP. I'm already calling it. I'm the MVP. I'm the MVP. It's necessary that I play in this game. It's necessary that I play four quarters. It's necessary that I score. I got to score. I got to assist. It's necessary that I do that. I'm not playing no more. I'm not playing. See? So, you would never see, you would never see the team that's playing on the offense you will never see the offensive coach call a timeout when the team is on fire. When the team is on fire and the chemistry is there and they're scoring, you will never see the offensive coach be the one to call a timeout. It will always be the defensive coach to call a timeout to try to stop the offense from scoring. So guess what, baby? And let me tell you something about basketball. You got to use your timeouts wisely. <laughs> you got to use them wisely. You, know, you only get just a few, so guess what? I'm not timing out no more. I'm not about to time out for you no more because you don't want to be my friend. And I got to chase you around asking you why you don't want to be my friend. I'm not timing out no more to argue with you and go back and forth with you about your opinion that don't matter. I'm not timing out no more to engage in your foolishness. It's not going to happen if you know anything about people. See, people start to get mad when they used to you going back and forth with them and you shut up. People start to get mad when they used to you argue with them about their opinion that didn't matter in the first place and you shut up. See, people start to get mad at you when they used to you engaging in their foolishness and then you stop. Well, guess what? People are about to be big mad at me. You're going to be big mad at me. And let me tell you something. If that's the game that you want to play, baby, go try out for middle school basketball. I'm in a whole different league right now. Me and you, we're not even in the same league. Go play that middle school basketball. I'm in the NBA. I'm in the NBA and I don't got time to play. I don't got the time to play no more. So, back to Hardy. The only break I'm taking is a water break. I'm not breaking, I'm not timing out for no foolishness no more. I understand now that there's purpose over my life and that I'm trying to get to my death and it's time out for foolishness. I'm not doing it. It's not gonna happen. Can I please get some water? Cause my mouth is dry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay. So, this trade becomes the most infamous trades in all NBA history. 
This, this trade right here was something serious. See, that was a trade that just took place and y'all don't even know it. I just traded my ways for God's ways. I just traded my plans for God's plans. It's necessary now that I reach grace, greatness. It's necessary now that favor chased me down because a trade just happened. I got to get to this greatness. So James Harden, James Harden is traded. He didn't have no time to decide what he wanted to do. As a matter of fact, he cried about not having enough time. I'm not giving y'all enough time today to, to decide what y'all want to do. You got to make the decision right now what you want to do. Do you want to ride this bench or what? Or you want to come off this bench and start this game? What you want to do, you have to make the decision right now. Because the decision that you make right now, your family is depending on that. Your kids are depending on the decision that you make right now. So what you going to do? They didn't give James Harden no time, and I'm not giving y'all time to do it. Make the decision right now. Don't look at me. My decision is already made. I done made my decision. I'm about to start this game. I'm about to play all four quarters. I already done told y'all that I got an MVP type of mind. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this. Guess what? If you're not offering me a starting position, and I can't play all four quarters, I don't want it. I don't want to be on your team. I don't want to be on your team. See, this is the winning team right here. Steph Curry don't got nothing on my coach. <laughs> Steph Curry don't got nothing on my coach. My coach is God. And I know for a fact as long as my coach is God, then I'm on the winning team. That I got to win. I will prosper. I'm not playing about my destiny. I'm serious about this. I want you all to get serious about your destiny. I want y'all to stop crying about support. Stop crying about who reposts you on their page. Stop crying about friends. And when you cry about those things, it's stopping you from getting to your destiny. I knew this three years ago. I knew this three years ago. I was supposed to start this game three years ago. But in those three years, I was too busy arguing with people. I was too busy being childish and petty and going back and forth with people. It's time out for that. I'm not doing that no more. It's not going to happen. As a matter of fact, is this being recorded right now? Because, see, when people start to come and play with me, I just want to hand you this CD to let you know how serious I am about my purpose. They don't need for me to say nothing. Go get this CD and listen to this CD because I'm not playing. At all. So. <laughs> what type of legacy are you going to leave behind? Are you going to continue to walk on this earth without leaving nothing behind? See, James Harden got his legacy. The list continues to go. See, James Harden becomes the first player in the NBA to score 60 points on a triple-double. James Harden is the face of the NBA right now. James Harden takes this Rockets team to the Western Conference Finals somewhere they ain't been in 18 years. James Harden becomes the next NBA's MVP. What you going to do? What you going to do? He got off the bench. He started this game, and when he came to Houston, he started playing every quarter. He played 45 minutes. He was the, he was the only player in the NBA that had the most, the most minutes in the, in the NBA. All this greatness over his life. He was serious about his destiny. You got to get serious about your destiny. Nobody's going to get serious about your destiny for you. Nobody's going to come and hand you anything. You got to get off this bench and start this game. You have to make that intelligent decision on your own. See, this decision was made on my own. As a matter of fact, all I said was this. I said on November the 18th, I don't, it, as my, it was on, it was in September. I said on November the 18th, ready or not, here I come. Ready or not. Either I'm ready or I'm not, but on November the 18th, I'm coming off this bench and I'm about to start this game. So, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? I know for a fact that it's millionaires in here. 
I know for a fact that it's people that's entrepreneurs in here. I know for a fact that it's people that's riding this bitch and sitting on their talents. Y'all got to get off this bitch and start this game. There's greatness over your life. There's something greater waiting on you to start. But it's not going to start until you start. Get off the bench. And this season, we're not taking no losses. Well, let me speak for myself. I'm not taking no losses this season. See, this is a new NBA. This is a new season. I'm not taking no losses. I see nothing but wins in my future. I see my future looking bright now. See, I wasn't that girl at first that seen the bright future. I was crying in the corner. I'm not that girl no more. I see a bright future for myself. I see greatness over my life now. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Get up and start this game. Whatever it is that's in your spirit, you need to do it. If you want to start a business, you need to do it. Ain't no more writing a proposal now, f first quarter, and then finishing the proposal in the fourth quarter. It's necessary that you play all four quarters. You got to give this your all. You got to give this your all. I'm, not, I'm, I'm playing every quarter this go around. This, and as a matter of fact, let me say this. See, the game ain't even started yet. Let's say that. I'm just warming up. This just practice right now. I'm just practicing right now. The game ain't even started. I'm showing out in practice right now. That's all that is. I'm serious about my destiny. Y'all going to have to start being serious about your destiny. You weren't put here just because. You weren't put here as a mistake. You weren't put here just because your mom decided, your mom and your daddy decided to do the do and have a baby. There's a reason why you are here. There's a reason why you have been placed here. You need to start using it. Find it. I don't know.